Good morning, I'm Beth Payne and you're watching Tip TV Finance. Today we're going to be speaking to a company whose share price is up 200% in the last year, delighted to have Cobus Lutes of Pan-African Resources on the phone. I'm also joined today by my co-host, Charlie Gibson. Cobus uh, performance has been really, really strong this year. Can you talk a bit more about what you expect from Pan-African in 2017? Um, talk about your uh, strategic priorities. Sure. Well, we uh, hope to see more of the same in 2017. Um, we're very proud of the teams that our operations are. They really have delivered operationally. Um, as I've said, uh, we've had a year of record profits, record production, and also a record dividend proposed uh, for approval at the uh, forthcoming or upcoming AGM. So 2017, we're hoping to do my, uh, more of the same. Uh, we will continue to drive uh, our focus on uh, maintaining and actually reducing costs, certainly reducing costs on a per unit basis, which means we have to produce um, certainly the same or hopefully a bit more, more gold. Uh, strategically, uh, we're looking at growth from um, a project that we call the Ilukulu, or the big, uh, big one at Evander, which will be a very significant uh, tailings uh, project producing about another 45 to 50,000 ounces at an all-in cost of $650 per ounce. So uh, we've completed the pre-feasibility on this project, and we're hoping for a uh, definitive feasibility study to be released in November of this year, where after we will then proceed to, to look at, uh, to see if we can uh, uh, commence construction. And uh, we'll continue to focus on safety. We'll continue to, to drive uh, productivity and all the, all the other initiatives we have going at the operations. Corpus, it's, it's Charlie here. Um, can I ask you, and the Elikulu Eli project, you, you mentioned you called, you said it was the big one. Um, how do you propose, what, what is the capital expenditure required on that project, and how do you propose to finance it? Charlie, in, in, in RAND terms, it's, uh, the capital ticket will be 1.7 billion, which is about 90 million pounds. And granted, it's a big project. Um, but uh, as I've said, uh, as I said during the presentation, if one took into account the size of Pan African when we pushed the button on the Barberton plant, which has been massively beneficial to the group, the sort of ratio of capital to market cap is pretty much the same as what it was uh, Pan African Group to BTLP when we when we commenced construction. So in terms of funding, we have a number of options available. As I've said, we have uh, a in principle, credit approved term sheet um, from a number of financial institutions for the whole capital amount. Um, we cognizant that shareholders want to continue to see our sector leading dividend being paid also, if you balance it with uh, uh, other considerations such as the sort of gearing level we want on the balance sheet. So we haven't yet decided as to how we, exactly we're going to fund it, but I think the point is that certainly funding options are available to us. And, and Corbus, when, when do you think we might see first gold from that project? So you said a definitive feasibility in November of this year, um, and then presumably what a final investment decision shortly afterwards. What are we looking in terms of the construction commissioning period, and, and then when, when do we expect first gold to appear? Charlie, the nice thing about a project uh, on the tailing side is that the lead time is pretty uh, short. Um, so we could see first gold from this project before the end of 2018, the calendar year. That's certainly what we're going to be targeting. So we've done a lot of work um, in, terms of, in terms of our environmental approvals. We've submitted uh, the required environmental impact assessment. We are looking to submit the other required permits uh, documents before the end of November. So we're very much on track to meet that deadline, which is first goal before the end of calendar 2018. And, and then, Corbus, t tell us, um, if I could ask you, tell us a little bit uh, about the operating environment in South Africa at the moment. We, of course, uh, over here in London, we, we, we get all of the lurid headlines. Um, you know, visitors there, they sometimes see the, the, the troubles with, with the electricity supply. But tell us your experience. You've been operating these mines now for, for some time in South Africa. But, but how are you being affected by the, the, the operating environment, uh, also the political environment as well? Uh, are you able to deal with it? Or, or do, do, does it sound, feel like an uphill struggle some days? Well, Charlie, every day is an uphill struggle. But I think that's mining anywhere in the world. Um, and uh, to some extent, I believe South Africa has a bit of an unfair rap. It's a lot easier sitting in Cape Town as a journalist and, and looking at the ocean and eating great food and, and uh, writing negative things about the country than what it is in sitting in West Africa. Um, and we've done a fair bit of work in the rest of Africa. Nowhere really is easy. So you know, what we've done, I believe, is we've set ourselves up and equipped ourselves to be able to operate successfully in SA. 
And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of positive things also. I mean, we have a skilled workforce. We have great infrastructure. The power issues that we experienced some time ago seem to be behind us for the moment. Um, so are we really making the most of it, Charlie? And I think, I mean, if you look at our production um, and our operations, we've demonstrated that one can operate fairly successfully in South Africa. What, if I could ask you this, what, what do you see as your biggest challenge at the moment? Is it... Is it macroeconomics? Is it the power supply? Is it the value of the rand? Is it the, the gold price? What's the thing that, that keeps you up at night and how are you mitigating that? Charlie, the number of things that keep me up, and I don't want to have one specific worry that I think um, supersedes any of the others. Um, and that's, again, it's just the nature of our game. Uh, we try and mitigate the risks where we can um, in terms of our, our business model. We uh, obviously strive to have costs on the lower end of the cost curve. Uh, we have a very conservative gearing ratio in our business. Um, we focus on safety, we focus on the operations, and we do what we can. Um, you know, we do worry about those things that we can control. Uh, we can't control the gold price or the rand dollar exchange rate. Um, uh, and hence, uh, there's no real reason to worry about them. Um, I think we have enough other things to, to focus on. There was a, a I don't know if I, I interpreted this correctly, I thought there was a slight hint there. You, you just talked about your, your conservative uh, balance sheet and your low level of gearing. Um, and I think, I think the expectation is you'll be ungeared by November of this year. That potentially gives you quite a large war chest. All right, you might have Elikulu coming up, which, which, which might you know, result in, in you taking on some more debt in order to fund that. But are you looking at any opportunities for, um, for, for corporate growth as well, for corporate activity? Um, has the moment come where you think that Pan-African might stride outside of, of South Africa and bestride the continent? Charlie, I mean, in terms of our gearing ratios, again, we'll try and maintain at the conservative levels, um, and it could it might take up those level, uh, the gearing levels, but the project payback at the sort of current uh, uh, gold price would be between three and four years, and then the project would be completely paid back. So it's a fair comment. Uh, we do have call it firepower to look to do something outside of South Africa, acquire an asset. We uh, have very stringent uh, requirements as far as returns are concerned and as far as the sort of asset we'd look at. We're not interested in going back into greenfields exploration. It has to be an asset that is either producing or that one can bring to account in fairly short order. Unfortunately, those assets are few and far between. And as you know, uh, the uh, markets in terms of gold equities have run quite a lot in the last so six to eight months, um, which makes finding value quite difficult. We've looked at a number of, of, of opportunities. We've yet to, to find the one that's right for us. And uh, I think testament to that is that your share price has been one of the best performing in London, I think, in terms of gold equities, or indeed globally, hasn't it? And also, also has one of the highest dividend yields. I think the third highest dividend yield in the sector. Yeah, and we'll try and maintain that, Charlie. I mean, as, as, as a pound investor, um, where a lot of, uh, of, of, of people are chasing yield, it's difficult to find a 4.5% dividend yield. And I think if you look at our history of the dividend payments, we, um, we're quite proud of our track record, and it's certainly something we will aspire to maintain. Cobus, thank you very much for joining us. It's been fantastic chatting to you, and congratulations once again on your fantastic set of results. We'll be right back after the break.